Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode two of Herbie's Eczema Podcast. I'm Harper. Hi. Hello, I'm Marco. Welcome back to Eczema's Podcast. Eh? Herbie. <laughs> Herbie's Eczema Podcast. Hey, come on. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Marco. Second episode, second episode. <laughs> So in this podcast, we are going to talk about various aspects of things that are related to eczema, whether it's be skincare, lifestyle, food, exercise, anything, even love, mental health, etc. Yeah, we managed to do the second episode. Ooh, welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, welcome to your first time if you are not you haven't watched the first episode yet. Hey, hey. Do remember to watch. Okay, la, why we want to do podcasts? Instead of just sticking to TikTok. The dancing or just, videos. Yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> I truly cannot do that. I For don't know how like, Gen Z doing <laughs> For listeners, you have to watch this episode. They actually understand what's going on right now. <laughs> ding, 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 dang, dang, ding, ding, ding. I don't know what is that. I also don't know. <laughs> I barely know that. Okay, la, so, so why we want to do podcast, right? Is because we find TikTok very... Okay, at least for me, very difficult to do. And Instagram is not enough for us to mm-hmm. share Nowadays, longer yeah. content, longer form of content. For example, like if you want to talk about mental health of eczema, then in Instagram, maybe we can talk like for one minute or maybe do a few carousels mm. speaking about like stress, maybe related to onset of eczema or anxiety, maybe onset to eczema, but we cannot go deeper. Mm. So I always find a need or an urge to share or talk more but when I write right people won't read so I, I okay so for me like, I, I'm a habitual podcast listener mm. and I listen to a lot of podcasts and when I'm doing household chores so or I'm driving so if during driving or doing like cleaning out my house right, I, I can't read right but mm. I find listening to podcasts really helpful because mm. I can do two things at one time yeah. So I think like maybe it's a good start for us to start a podcast so we can talk more about this. Yeah. Because we will, I think also I understand because people will literally listen more like to longer things <laughs> because or you don't have to think back you're listening to the same thing. You have to like, you have to stop midway. You have to scroll, scroll your thing. You have to like scroll, scroll, scroll only or okay, then let it go. But I <laughs> think yeah, if you're doing, listening to a podcast while doing something or even driving a car, uh, I think it's actually like, oh, come down to your mind. You have to, you don't have to think of, you have to swipe your phone or even have to keep on, on your phone like that. Correct. <laughs> mm. So, so for ep- this episode, we want to talk about 10 ingredients you should avoid if you have eczema. And these 10 ingredients are actually very, very common among many skincare products in the market. So if, but a lot of us not very educated about the ethnic ingredients, but unfortunately they are majority in the market. Mm. So we want to talk more about this. Lah. We have put some brands actually not just skincare, but also like for conditioners or even shower gel to give you guys a, like a physical, physical understanding of you can see what is actually mm. inside. So the list, right, we got it from National Eczema Organization. We were putting the list in, we will the put link. the link in the description box, you can refer to it for more information. But we will get you through across the list. La. And at the end, we will add two more, which is not included in the list, but we think also quite, quite I think people important can, for yeah. us to in, add into. Yeah, yeah. Before we dive in any ingredient, la, maybe we can talk about like how in the standard way in beauty industry, mm. how formulators or chemists actually form the ingredient list or formulate the skincare product. And often, right, they have, usually they have a standard ways of doing it. Mm. Uh, for example, like how Chinese cook fried rice and how uh, British cook rice is very different. They have their own standard oh, yeah, yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. British might use a stove to cook the rice, but we rice will cooker, use, yeah. Yeah, we will use I- rice cooker. That's why Uncle Rojo... <laughs> Yeah, that's why uh, you, so you, if you know someone that actually, if you know actually someone that actually studies outside of Malaysia or even study in like some European countries, uh, if, you, if you see your friends bringing rice cooker, mm. uh, you'll know why. Because mm. it's truly Asian. The parents mm. want them to use rice cooker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so in beauty industry, this standard way, right, 
they have a standard way, like, as in mm. they will put something first, then and another thing, another thing like that. They, they have a standard way of formulate like certain product. Mm. So, but then this standard way often focus a lot on short-term satisfaction. What do I mean, right? It's like, for example, they will put something that make it smells nice mm. or put something to make it feel nice, make it non-sticky, make it silky, make it feel nice lah. Mm. Yeah, just like for example, like shampoo, I want a silky hair. Okay, no problem. I put a lot of silicone in it, then cool. Mm. Then when you use it, right, you feel your hair very silky, but over time your hair fall like crazy. Mm. Yeah. Or you want a non-sticky moisturizer, no problem. I put a lot of alcohol inside. Then you apply your skin. Hey, it yeah, absorbs very fast. Eh. Hey, very good, right? This one, non-sticky. All the promoter will tell you. It's non-sticky. Then all the aunties will buy it because it's non-sticky. Mm. But then you, the ingredient, the, the moisturizer itself has a lot of alcohol. Over time, it brings water away from your skin. Oh, so then yeah. why you apply moisturizer in order? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like all these standard way focus a lot more on short-term mm. satisfaction uh, instead of like improve your skin over time. Mm. Why? Because when customers feel good, they will repeat to uh, buy again. If they apply it, you very oily or very heavy or very... Mm, then uh, mm, I don't want this. Uh. The, the, yeah. The... the <laughs> The immediate feedback is not good. Then they will just move on to another product that gives them better feeling mm. instead of better effect. So that is some how some somewhat a uh, standard way of formulator in the beauty industry to form the product because they want customer to buy more, repeat order mm. more, and buy more. Yeah. If you guys see your ingredients list, right? How they actually follow the order is not. They just put the ingredients, but actually by the amount of ingredients they put inside, that's how they follow down by the list. Like the first thing you see on the ingredients list would be the most things that have that have added. Yeah, yeah, the, the highest percentage. Yeah. I know there's a very famous flora toner. Flora toner. The brand start with F. And they always have this big carnival or road show mm. in between of the gardens, no, no, the garden, Pink Valley. Mid Valley, yeah. Because the outlet is just next to it. Mm. <laughs> so, but then it, if you read their ingredient list, you notice that the first ingredient is water. Uh. Second ingredient is preservative. Oh, Why? The because idea. they want to keep the flower inside the toner fresh. Uh. So you think of like, oh, I buy this toner because it looks very natural. Because it's got flower inside. But... If you really dive, yeah, dive dig into. into it, dive into it, you'll see, oh, water and preservative. You put a lot of water and preservative on your face only. And the flower extract is very, very minimal only. Uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, this one, yeah, yeah. The, the existence of the flower actually is a marketing gimmick for you to think like you're using something nature. Because there's flowers inside. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah, that was like, that, that is quite bad, like, I think, in terms of this, this kind of formulation practice so right in beauty industry there's always trade-off between long-term and short-term satisfaction and effect when something put give you long-term effect often in short term they can't you can't see anything at all or you don't feel good using it for example like our oil our balm some people might find it like slightly heavier Mm. Slightly, la, but not as heavy as those from UK or US, US or Australia. They use a lot of very big molecule plant oil. We pick it very carefully. We only use scrapseed oil. Uh, yeah, that's very lightweight because of Malaysia is very hot and humid, right? So mm. we pick it very carefully. Okay. We put our the our heart in the formulation. Now, so yeah, we are very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> So when there's a trade-off, right, between usually there's a trade-off between long-term and short-term effect. Mm. So if the short-term, the ingredient put inside, give you a lot of short-term satisfaction and don't the ingredient don't doesn't kill you immediately. Mm. That means or you don't know you don't see the harm of it immediately or within short-term period. It's okay to use. Like for example, in our balm or our facial oil, we don't use any essential oil or fragrance mm. at all. Or some people might find, hey, I can't smell anything. Mm. Yeah. Then I can't 
uh, uh, send a smell of like rose la or rosemary la. I mean, then they will see like, mm, maybe it's not effective or something like that. But if you really use it long term, right, you'll see something that's without fragrance or essential oils that's better for your skin. Mm. Our first ingredient, yay, which is fragrances. In behind behind any skincare or personal care packaging, right? Fragrances usually labeled as perfume. It's a more atas way of saying it's perfume. perfume. Mm. <laughs> I think it's a France. I'm not sure. French language, I mean, I is it? Try, yeah, yeah. Try yeah, anyway, la, it's, it's not labeled. Sometimes they will label it as fragrance or sometimes they will label, label it as perfume. They are the same thing. They are the same thing. Mm. And perfume, it can be any form. It can be chemically synthetic by chemists in a lab or it can be some business trade secret so they can just lump it together and say this is perfume we put in some sense to make, make it feel nice mm. smells nice actually uh, the perfume and perfume actually the difference is just uh, the concentration of the the thing they use actually mm. uh, for mm. perfume is 8 to 12 percent meanwhile for perfume for them to use that is when it's above 12 to 18 percent mm. so they, they only categorize as perfume Ooh, okay yeah. okay so so perfume is actually higher percentage yes, Ooh. yes, yes. Ooh, okay really interesting so. since during mco period not not sure if you guys not uh, remember i have done a real videos like to researching across different pharmacies mm. to search for a hand sanitizer that's actually that is suitable for people with sensitive skin oh. but then i noticed most of it got perfume inside oh, that means 12 to 18 uh, they're very high but i only went to watson guardian carrying and the sunway pharmacy Sun, uh, uh, this mainstream one are uh, these four these four I think I only found one in Guardian without perfume. Only one. The rest just perfume, perfume, perfume. Mm. So I, I I yeah, I noticed that a lot of our customers ask me uh, how what hand sanitizer should I use or something. Because like right that. now we are uh. doing in like a like pandemic, COVID and mm. we are always recommended to mm. use uh mm. Sanitizer all the time. Mm, like, yeah, like, I think that's a very tough time for anyone with sensitive skin. Yeah, you myself being, suffer. Like, I don't have eczema for now, but during that time, I also feel like my hand broken uh, because of a lot of alcohol. alcohol and, and the like, perfume. Yeah, yeah, then the perfume <laughs> <laughs> and hand sanitizer during mm. that period. Yeah. I think yeah, during this pandemic, I think a lot of people are facing like they're having like the those skin mm. conditions is because mm. you're rubbing things, you're wearing things. Mm, even fragrance is not that good, like, but then we still see it a lot in the market. Uh, when we buy something, we f we feel like we're more we're more pulled towards like the scent oriented. Like we're very scent oriented when we're buying skincare products or even uh for our face. Mm -hmm. uh, if it smells good, we use it to even wash our body, like shower gel, all those. Yeah. Okay, when when we do bazaar, we also observe this thing. Uh. We let people to taste, to taste, but to, to try the <laughs> product. <laughs> cannot eat, cannot eat, not eat. <laughs> okay, so, so when they try the product, the very first behavior they do, open up and sniff. Uh, I think not just, I, I also personally, I, I can say I also do it. La, because uh, if, it, if it smells good, your body, your body will actually smell good. Also when you uh, then you feel good, right? The emotion uh, arises. Then you're like, oh, good this is good i want to buy yeah, something yeah. like that like, oh my god yeah. <laughs> so I, I sort of guilty also like, because i personally also do this la. whether your girlfriend also do that my girlfriend uh, she, she i think she, she does it more than me uh. that's why i think that, that's yeah. how i learned from her like uh. you will go to try to sneeze because i uh. she don't care about like my my shower gel being very centered or even anything like <laughs> but then, uh, now I, I will tend to lean more but then, uh, now <laughs> from this i actually know uh read ingredients first see mm. what is there <laughs> My girlfriend wise, uh, she she often she will find uh if you can smell uh, like what you said like uh, during bazaar some people actually <laughs> would like smell first yeah this is a bad way like, because it encourages skincare uh, skincare manufacturers to make products they only focus in like nice effect like what we've been talking <laughs> just now <laughs> uh, they only <laughs> want the, 
the they short term satisfaction short term, yeah. they want people to feel good immediately and then mm. buy yeah. and then buy again because it give us give them a good feeling mm. something like that yeah that, that actually I think is the one worst thing is because when people keep on buying that they think mm. oh they don't have to they don't have to like make themselves better or even like try to uh, better mm-hmm. or, or not in a way of just to make the things better mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If anyone actually wants to see is this uh, correct or not, like there's actually a lot of research being done mm-hmm. based on perfume use uh, or even perfume and there's a lower concentration mm-hmm. used mm-hmm. in objects. Uh. Our second point is essential oils. Because uh, I think more very more common now as essential oils is a very... Uh, even my girlfriend or even I've seen people actually mm-hmm. buying like uh, essential oils like from doTERRA. I'm not sure if you heard mm-hmm. of the yeah, brand. Yeah, doTERRA is a very popular MLM company. <laughs> oh, I know the company. They focus on like essential oils. Uh. Yeah. My my supervisor from my ex company, mm-hmm. my previous company. Yeah, she also do that. Uh, she also uses like doTERRA. Uh, she do a like a side hustle of like selling, selling ah, doTERRA, yeah, 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 yeah. and she often conduct your um, mini yoga session in her own house. Uh, and then at the same time, right, she want to cultivate the kind of MLM community in her, <laughs> like oh. Lulu Lemon. <laughs> Lulu uh, Lemon conduct yoga session in their outlets. Oh. Not in Malaysia, la, maybe not in Malaysia, oh, but, but in, yeah, that's what in, like. in US or yeah. maybe other places. If la. you can, yeah, that's the very first marketing strategy. Strategy is that if you come in naked uh-huh. without anything, I give you a full set of Lulu Lemon. So it turns out that a lot of people went there with a jacket uh, and then step yes. in the store. Just, <laughs> Oh, wow. Very, very interesting. That, that's how they, they got the first like, like very big marketing strategy. Uh, uh, moves during, using like this if you dare to come in naked. Uh, for Amor, they are okay. La. But uh, in Malaysia, you cannot tank up by police. Yeah, cannot, more cannot. Haram, la. haram. <laughs> <laughs> so don't go try doing it in Malaysia. Do because I know Pavilion, we have one. Uh, pavilion, yeah, yeah, pavilion got one. There's, there's one really uh, man, So uh, don't try that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a reminder, don't try. No, that that was uh, news. La. Yeah, mm, very, very old. Very old already. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> All right, back to it. Uh, essential oil uh, it's, even though it's natural it's not necessarily better la, because actually what actually causes uh, your skin to worsen is due to uh, an over exposure la. often this essential oil right if they ever trigger eczema it's in a unlute, diluted form as in like it's normal you just apply the essential oil directly on your skin and that's very high potency and very high concentration uh, for people that worry what kind of essential oil that would trigger the most it would be like the tree, tea tree oil mm. is it tea tree oil right, in body shop they sell it in a dilute, diluted form undiluted form as in like that only like uh-huh. the, the essential oil then, then they market it as like a spot character for acne Oh, because it's very high, highly uh, yeah. concentrated. Uh. I use it before when I was very, very young and when I have like had super, super serious acne. Uh. Yeah, I use it before. It's like, yeah, I wasn't... Short-term uh, benefits. For short-term, uh, and then just roll it on. I think it's a roll on. I, I'm not sure whether they have changed the packaging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then, but then for people with sensitive skin, yeah, but when I was young, my skin barrier is relatively healthier and thicker. La. <laughs> so my skin can tahan that mm. tea tree oil. But if you have sensitive skin or eczema, there's a lot of research saying that tea tree oil, undiluted one or even diluted one can trigger the onset of eczema. Mm. Uh, because mm. it's very, very harsh tea tree oil. Tea tree oil, yeah. Mm. yeah. So uh, even though if you have acne, you can it may heal your acne. But it may worsen your own like skin condition. La. Mm, you hurt your skin barrier. Mm. That's the problem of a lot of active ingredients in the market. Like um, retinols or maybe a lot of vitamin B. Vitamin A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. La, just B, like, B, B, those, like, like <laughs> those active ingredients in the skincare. Uh. They, how they behave, right? They, they hurt your skin barrier first. Uh. So your skin can exfoliate out, like get rid from away from your body. Then your body, your if you have relatively healthier skin barrier, the or your skin can regenerate faster, like normal skin. Ah, then mm. your skin will have new skin coming out. 
So you feel like, oh, it's cute. Oh, my skin is better now. So you see, like not, that. that. It's just that they, it, do, the it kills your barrier first to mm. make sure it barrier, the mm. new one comes out. Mm. Mm. Even if you go to a facial treatment, they will use laser. I'm not sure. That one they use laser. Also to hurt your skin barrier. Uh, then the mechanism is that to let the, the inner skin layer come out so you have a better skin, newer skin. Oh. So you feel like, oh, my skin is better now. No, your skin was already like that. It's already like that. But just that it's like the quicker buried, the process. like underneath only before. Mm. Yeah, it's like that. No? Because with, uh, talking about the skincare during the treatment, uh, I only did the traditional way of using the, the whole thing. I'm not sure you guys ever seen or not. Like the holes on the stick, I'll just press on it. Oh, the, the remove back head. Uh, I've only done that. I'm not sure what the laser thing is. Uh, let's continue on back to the essential oil. Would be uh, about the lemon. Uh, another one. Other than the tea tree oil. Uh, right now, we're talking about the lemon essential oil. Many people think lemon... Uh, I'm not sure about you guys, but the lemon, for other people I've seen or even like mm. the studies about it, like it says that people are more attracted towards the lemon one. Like the oh lemon. yeah, the scent, you yeah. the smell the of scent. it, uh, yeah. cause it's very refreshing mm. and it's feel good. I guess so. I'm not mm. used. I'm not the kind of guy that actually use, but this is like the I don't like, like lemon. Oh. I like lemon water. La. Drink, la. drink, drink only, only, la. only la. La. Mm. But the scents, I prefer something else. Mm. Or even yeah, I prefer something else. But actually, uh, for lemon essential oil, right? Your it has a high concentration of. Fu furo cormarin. <laughs> uh, the spelling is F U R O C O U M A R I N. Uh, for anyone that wants to know, like how, how to actually pronounce this or even spell this word, uh. Uh, Doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you know this word, uh, You may learn something new. Uh, uh, this with this high concentration, right? If you get under the sun, you might get skin burn even more easily. No, it becomes as you. Uh. <laughs> yeah, lemon essential oil is very very sensitive to sunlight. Mm. So of uh, we. I think a lot of aromatherapists, they know this and they don't recommend apply on the skin at all. Oh, uh, mm. they will be nice mm. a bit to uh, mm, let you like know. As put a few drops in the diffuser, okay. Mm. But apply on skin, skin. right, it's very high risk. Mm. Very, very high risk. Because I know, I know like some essentials I've seen also, like, they, mm. have to, they have to rub or smell, even rub mm. on the skin to actually mm. absorb it. Because like. mm. lemon essential oil, right, even if you stay indoor, mm. you have a lot of lights indoor also. It will trigger some form of hurt to your skin as well. Mm. Although a lot of people say uh, lemon essential oil has a lot of vitamin C. La. It can whiten up my skin. La. Um, no. Mm. If you want to get a whitening product, get a product that is with vitamin C. Mm. Yeah, there's a very famous local brand use vitamin C in as their main ingredient. I'm not going to say, say that here. <laughs> I'm not doing free advertisement for them. They are already so popular and big. Uh, yeah, a local brand? Or? Yeah, a local brand mm. owned by a very successful businessman's daughters. Oh, that's a businesswoman. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're already very big. <laughs> la. yeah, yeah. You go research yourself. <laughs> I, I, I'm not doing a free advertisement here. Yeah, their whole brand is like, using vitamin C apparently. Like oh. for us, we use mugwort. Uh, and you you for some people that were, that's very curious you can see him actually like there's writing mark word here la. Yeah, mark word mark word mark word mark word is like I think it's the most magical herb in the world. Mm. It, it can use everything, including for for women right, including like menstrual health la. Oh yeah, if you feel cold, always have cold limb. You drink a lot of mark word tea, it will help also. Mm. Ah, at least that's the case for me. So uh sunlight if you view uh scare sun, sunblock, uh, reminder, sunblock uh, blocks out the sun, but if you use lemon essential oils, uh, yeah, it absorbs the sun even mm, worse. Yes, yes, yeah, that's a very good description, crew. True, true, true. But then right disclaimer, if your skin is doing quite well, or if you find benefit from essential oil, like for example, like uh maybe uh lavender in a good plant oil, maybe in a olive oil or squalene oil, you find it okay. Continue using it, we find no problem with it. But you need to make sure you, you dilute it from a good plant, good quality plant oil uh, instead of like, don't use almond oil or coconut oil on your face, uh, you will clog your pores because coconut oil and almond oil, they are very big in molecule. Mm -hmm. Big molecule as in the, if you look at it, chemist, microscope. Yeah, microscope with the chemical, the chemical, the molecular structure, how their carbon change. 
form, right? Bigger size. Yeah, their their size is bigger. They have a lot of C C C H H H O O O O. If you're from Science Stream, you you know you know what I'm talking about, lah. Since the molecule is bigger, mm-hmm. but vasculin or grapseed oil is slightly smaller. As in one molecule only maybe like a few carbon, but coconut maybe got twenty or mm. I haven't done a proper research here, lah. But the the number of carbon or the O H uh, bind is like definitely larger and longer or. More larger in numbers, yes. Yeah. That is why, right? Um, because of the possible potential risk of essential oil, we don't use any essential oil in our product at oh. all. At all, we want to keep it uh clean, and only the necessity with the best carrier oil, which is grapeseed oil. Most of the time, grapeseed oil and mugwort herb and beeswax only. And mm. some peppermint, mm. because you only want to keep necessary ingredient, but not those redundant ingredient to make you feel good. The fragrance, uh, perfume, perfume. Yeah. yeah, we we don't we don't pursue any short term satisfaction mm. in our ingredient at all. We only focus on long term satisfaction mm. effect long-term effect in our product. So the ingredient that we pick is necessary only for the long-term effect. Mm. That's why you don't do TikTok. Because <laughs> we really don't know. <laughs> and after you watch a TikTok, right, you forgot the person already. The, the creator. Uh, <laughs> unless, unless they are very, very popular. I'm also not sure. Even the dance from who, I also don't know. <laughs> and barely say people dancing on mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>